Hey, how are you guys? This is Nate Albaugh, head football coach, Champaign Central High School in Champaign, Illinois. I have um, <clears throat> been running my 3-5, which I ended up calling the simplest 3-5, made a YouTube video out of, and people started getting pretty interested. I ended up making a video series about it, um, and now I've been asked a couple times about how would this work for eight-man football. <clears throat> so now that I've been asked a couple times, I wanted to make this little video. I don't know what I'll do with it right now. Um, I don't. I just want to have it. Who knows? Maybe someday um, let this turn into a presentation uh, myself. Maybe one day I'll end up coaching eight man. Who knows? Uh, but I do think that the, that the eight man game is going to continue to grow. So I think this is important subject. Um, but but let's take a look. So. First of all, let me start off a disclaimer and say that I've never coached eight man. And as I look look at it, every time I draw something up schematically, I feel like I'm one man short. You know, so it's th that even number of defenders, it's hard. So I don't know how you guys do it. <clears throat> My hat's off to you guys. Um, I do think it would be really fun, man, and, and almost like a a whole new ball game in some ways schematically. You could have a lot of fun with that. But let's take a look. So the if I'm looking at the eight-man game, then I'm going to take three players off the field. I'm going to lose my corners, <clears throat> and I'm going to lose my nose. And I'm going to leave my mic here and my hound, and those, for me and my defense, those are my best two guys. Those are my best two players. Those are the guys that I want um, in the middle of the defense. And, and generally, we had wanted our nose, but um, that is our best player. So, so we're going to lose the nose. And the general thought is this, um, that mic is going to drop down against two tight ends, whereas against uh, one tight end or no tight ends, we'll drop that mic back to play like the mic, you know? So the mic and the hound in the system both <clears throat> learn how to read guards. So they both have to understand how to play uh, play this, this guard to guard read. They both need to understand how to play that triangle. And it's really not that much different when you come down and put your hand down. So if we were running uh, my defense for the eight man game, if I got two tight ends, this is by default without having run this for a year. When I just look at it schematically, I'm going to bring my mic down and he's going to play like a nose. Now he's going to get off the ball and play just like my nose does. So we'd have to drill this like crazy. Collision, and after we collision, we're looking to see what's going on. As soon as we get a puller, he needs to chase that puller. He's trying to get into a play side A. At the very least, make it so that if the guard, let's say this guard here pulled and went right. Let's go to edit this play so I can move these things around. If this guard were to pull and go right, that the nose slash mic in this situation, he has to understand that he collisions here first. We call it a button press. He sees this guard over here pulling right, so he knows I need to now begin to work, get off this center, and try to work to this A gap. So that in the event that this guard did not come down to help on him, let's say this guard moves on to the next level, and I still get this puller here, well, this mic needs to see that I collision, I got a puller to the right, I need to be able to come off and I need to be able to occupy that A gap. Okay, so we do ask our nose to be a two gap defender and we feel good about that. Uh, so, you know, and some years we coach it better than others and I've been become very aware of that lately. Of course, my hound's gonna read my guards still. So if you have seen the four video series, we're reading guards right through here, Mike and Hound. Um, we label things in zone one or zone two. So his fit's the same. Zone one, he's fitting downhill, A to B to C. And my, by default, you know, I'm feeling like per game plan, I would know how high to play this guy. But I think he could do a lot of damage from about seven yards and get down and get involved in the run game. My dogs are going to play the basic pinch loop scheme. So this is a pinch, which we'd be in more often than we would be in loop. And he would read by default far back. Um, and if it were a loop, so if my DNs were going out, he would read near back, and he also might scoot up a touch. Now, in my video series, I, I talked about how if we had an overhang here, a tight end of some sort, we would come right down and we would blitz every time. Um, we've kind of gone away from that. We don't want to blitz every time there. I like having a little bit of depth. I might, of course, per game plan, you might adjust these guys, but by default, I'd probably put them at about four yards. I will also tell you this, that we're playing with this idea, and I think that you should consider it as well, is that on a loop call, if my DNs were going out, then my dog would read near back. But on a 
pinch call where my ends are going in, we are toying around with our dog reading this near guard. And if he gets a down block, he needs to be prepared to scoop. If he gets a pull this way, he would scrape right away. If he got a pull backside, we would want to get him as a plus one over to that other side because we feel like we have an extra defender. So we would try to plus one him with a puller that way. So we're really looking hard into that. Uh, and I think we're going to give that a shot this year. Um, out here on the edge, of course, my monsters, by default, not knowing a game plan with all things being equal, I'm going to have these monsters reading this last man on the line. Now, it's tougher for these guys because I don't know how you would coach this. You guys would have more, you eight-man coaches would have more experience with this than me. But what I'm going to have to ask these guys to do is I'd like to play somewhat of a cover three here. I'm going to flat-footed read this, and if he releases at all, I'm going to have to back up a touch with him. It's if he touches my DN as he blocks down on my DN is where I need to begin to scrape or strike a match and come down and constrict. Now I don't have to get there too fast. I don't want him to feel the pressure that he has to come down and constrict this so fast that any quick touch block by the tight end he could fake you and get vertical on you. I don't think he needs to be in that big of a hurry because you do have a lot of help coming from the inside out on these plays. We just want him once he's committed to a down block come constrict this as much as you can and you might end up constricting this at about say two yards or so uh, I'm okay with that right now as I just look at it schematically when I look at the big picture how we're gonna get things done how we're gonna stop somebody here so you know this is what I'm looking at right now just as as when you release guys uh, he's gonna be over the top of everything and we're gonna ask these dogs to really play hook curl to flat hook curl to flat uh, again not a, I haven't coached this in a season, so I, there would be some growing pains here. But that's what I would do for two tight ends. Okay, so let's go to let's go back and find one tight end. Now, one tight end I played around with a little bit, and I think it's hard. But I think as soon as I didn't have a tight end, I would <clears throat> take my mic off of the line of scrimmage. Now, I, I think I played around again also with those DNs. Like, what, what exactly do you do with those DNs? But I think the easiest thing to do would say, hey, you're going to be on the last man on the line of scrimmage, period. You're on the last man on the line of scrimmage, just playing the numbers game. Now, if they did some sort of unbalanced thing to you or something, you might be able to move your mic from the center over to the guard if they tried to unbalance you. But I think for the most part, I think you keep your ends on the last man on the line of scrimmage. Now, I also played with this a little bit, but I'm going to take that mic off and let them read guards, play the play ball the way we play ball. But I might consider, instead, see, normally my mic's going to play right here. But I might consider with one tight end, keeping him a little shallower. Maybe he's going to play at three yards, just in case they try to do something, maybe inside zone. He's close to this A-gap. He is obviously A-gap responsible, uh, but he can help you a lot from there. Your dogs are probably going to be able to split out a little bit, knowing that your ends are going inside to help you out. Although I do recommend making sure you use some loop calls. So this guy's going to jab and go out, while this man um, maybe doesn't cut his split out quite so wide, knowing that likely to see an open window here. Okay, Remember, a lot of times what I was saying was on a loop, he might read this guard. No, I'm sorry, on a loop, he would read a near back. So as soon as he got backs coming at him, he's got to be willing, ready to fill if this window in front of him just opens up wide. Okay, so he might not split out so wide. But uh, So make sure you're mixing those in. But this is this is how I would defend it, likely. This is what I would take take with me. Okay, now you can play a couple different uh, coverages, but you guys are you're obviously limited in your coverages that what you can do. I mean, for the most part, I would be in in man to man here for the most part, trying to play some sort of robber on this tight end. Meaning, if he released vertical, my hound would take him. If he tried to run it out, I would want my dog to be able to help out on him. Okay, and if you if I ran any sort of blitzes at all, which I would want to have available for passing situations, I don't see a lot of options besides manning it up. Uh, maybe playing a little zone under man up or uh, in a true passing situation maybe if you you found a way to bring your dog and cut this in down and bring him here and let this dog go uh, and then allow your mic to man it up and play another man over the top you know, who knows who knows what you would be capable of getting done um, but I would basically be in man if I wanted to blitz maybe some variation of cover one so I'd have a man over the top or um, cover zero um, with some help. So yeah, playing cover zero and getting everybody else involved somewhere. So uh, those are some things I would 
play around with. All right, so, and then, of course, if... Um, I went back to, let's see if, yeah, so there's two tight, one tight. I've got zero tight ends in here somewhere. There it is, no tights. So no tight ends. Now, you're going to see who knows what kind of offenses, but by default, again, my mic would be out of it. And I don't, there's no gaps unaccounted for in here. So I don't think he needs to be down here at three. I could move him back to almost six yards. And now here is where you could play around with some coverages when they went two by or two by two if you saw that. Um, you're obviously more limited because of even number of players than I am in 11 man. But, you know, let's say you had one back and you had the two receivers on one side. Well, you could have get away with some cover two read over here with these two guys. So that'd be nice if you, can, if you have that much time to coach. Um, but otherwise... I would still continue to stick with like cover one or cover zero. Uh, um, you know, cover zero looks awfully nice right here. Just saying cover zero, let your dog help out underneath. Um, so you really play an off man with a dog in this un, um, underneath zone. I kind of like that. That seems to be the simplest. Uh, but I would likely play around with the ability to run some cover two read when I saw two guys. And then if they did run empty, I think you'd have to choose a side. One side I'm going to have play some cover two read or a man-to-man -man with my hound. And the other side, I'm going to have to peel somebody. Uh, I like the consistency of leaving my dog in, in dog in place. Those run fits they're consistent with. Maybe bringing my Mike over, who should be one of my best athletes, and letting him man the other guy up. Play man on one side, cover two read on the other with a zone underneath, or man across the board with two dogs playing zone underneath. Uh, so... That is my quick take on the eight-man game and how I would adapt my 3-5 to, to defend eight-man football. Um, so, hope you enjoyed it, and good luck to you. Feel free to shoot me any other questions. Uh, I don't know how much this actually helped you, but I did get this question a couple times, so I want to have this available to share with coaches. Uh, you can email me at coachallball at gmail.com. See ya.